under the main menu bar of the Skyview HDX system, you will find a button labeled Info. As the title suggests, activating this feature will present the user with Dynon's comprehensive information page. This page within the Skyview system contains access to all the navigational information provided by Dynon and Dynon's data partners. This page also includes ADSB weather information if your system is properly equipped and configured. By using the touchscreen interface or control knobs, the user can navigate to all of the navigational information available within the HDX system. For best results before accessing the information feature, ensure your Skyview HDX system is properly configured, including updating the system's firmware to the latest version found on Dynon's website. This also includes updating Dynon provided US aviation and obstacle databases, or Dynon approved third party data. This may also include charts and directory information. Pressing the Info button will present a page with several tabs contained along the top of the page window. If no item has been selected or highlighted on the map page, selecting the Info button will always result in the page presenting the APT or Airport tab by default. The Airport tab allows the user to search and see information related to any airport within the extensive Skyview system library. In the U.S., Dynon's database is based on FAA databases which provide comprehensive information on airports, large and small, along with other aviation facilities and procedures that cover the continental United States, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. This information update occurs on the FAA standard 28-day cycle and is available to Dynon customers at no fee. Data for international customers is available from Dynon's third-party partners. Links to these partners are available on Dynon's website. The airport directory is the cornerstone of the information feature, providing a wealth of details about airports. Users can search by airport identifier. Simply enter the identifier in the search window like this. While completing this operation, the system will provide guidance on what identifiers are available by eliminating character choices. Here we have selected one of our favorite airports, Whitman Regional, KOSH, and as you can see, as the character choices are selected, the characters that would not complete a valid identifier are slowly eliminated. Users can also search by name or location. The window just below the airport identifier window is the airport name window. Using a touch action, select it. Start by typing in the airport name or location, and as before, the system will start to filter characters as selections are made. The window below this is the airport location window. Searches can be completed here in the same manner as the identifier and name windows. Another way to easily and quickly select information about an airport or navigational point is a touch gesture on the map page. With a map page present, touch any icon presented. If information on that item is available, a pop-up window with abbreviated information will appear, confirming the selection. If the item shown in the pop-up window is not the item intended and an alternative is available at that same location, a small green arrow will appear in the pop-up window allowing the user to scroll through the available items. Once the correct item is shown, the user can select the Info button to provide more in-depth detailed information on the selection. This action works for most navigational items too, including VORs, NDBs, fixes, visual reference points, and user-created waypoints. As long as the pop-up information window appears when selected, you know there is information available. Since airspace is not a navigable item, additional information with the info button is not available. All airspace information is displayed on the map page itself. In addition to those informational items, detailed information on pilot reports, or PIREPS, is available when shown on the map. But only if your system is equipped and configured to receive this information via the FAA ADSB in network. The PIREP icon will be displayed on the screen in the approximate location as reported. Touching the PIREP symbol will highlight the PIREP and open up a pop-up window with abbreviated information. Selecting the Info button will present the PIREP details in both coded and decoded format. Getting back to the airport information page, 
you can see the vast amount of information that is available to the pilot. The primary APT tab can contain airport information such as field elevation, available fuel, available parking, tower frequency, and traffic pattern altitude. It also contains abbreviated navigational information such as distance, bearing, and estimated time and route to the airport along with the airport location coordinates. Just to the left of the airport tab is the recent or RCNT tab. This is a historical list of recently selected airports or other navigational items including waypoints, fixes, etc. Highlighting any of these tabs by touching or scrolling or present other selectable tab options to the right. These tab selections are dynamic and will appear depending upon information available for the highlighted item. Here you see several tabs available containing information surrounding the airport that is selected. If a waypoint is highlighted, the tab selection changes depending on the information available. Just to the right of the APT tab is the COM tab. It is important to understand that the information presented in this tab relates directly to the airport that was selected. The information presented under this tab will be all of the available COM or communication and navigational frequencies for that airport. If your system is equipped with a Dynon COM radio or other compatible radio, you will also be presented on the main menu with the option to tune the selected frequency to the standby position by simply pressing the Tune COM button. If a nav or navigational frequency is selected, the user is similarly presented with the option to tune a nav radio provided the system is equipped and configured properly to do so. The next tab that is presented will be dependent upon your system's configuration. If you have chart and diagram data from one of Dynon's chart partners, you will see the PLT or plates tab. Under this tab, you will find access to charts, approach plates, airport diagrams, and other traditionally paper-based information for the airport that you have selected. Simply highlight the data you wish to view and select View. To exit this page, touch the X in the upper right-hand corner or make another button selection on the main menu bar. More on the use of these charts and plates will be in another lesson. The next tab is the Weather tab, denoted by WX. Again, this is only if your system has been equipped and configured to receive the FAA system ADSB-N weather information through the Dynon SV ADSB 470 or 472 module. The weather information displayed here will relate only to the airport that was selected under the Airport tab. The user can scroll through this information using the knob or touch action. Because the information available here is so vast, it will be covered in other lessons but it is important to remember where the pilot can access this important in-route information. The next tab, labeled RWY for runway, will provide information on the runway or runways available at the selected airport. This information typically includes runway length and width, along with surface type and condition. If available, lights and the type of lights would be noted here. And of course, pattern direction and runway numbers are also displayed at this location. To select information for a different runway available, touch or scroll to highlight and the information for that runway will be presented. The final tab presented is denoted by RMK, the Remarks tab. This section provides the pilot with information on the selected airport taken directly from the FAA Airports Facility Directory in the U.S. or other similar resources for international customers, typically provided by one of Dynon's data partners. This contains additional non-standard information about an airport that may not be readily categorized elsewhere, including details about airport operations, facilities, procedures, or potential hazards that pilots should be aware of, often including local rules or unique characterizations of the airport not covered in other sections. Let's take a look at some other navigational items where the information page will provide additional data. Here we have a VOR. Just like the other items on the map page, if selected, the pop-up window appears with abbreviated information. Once again, selected info will bring up the information page, expanding on the details of that navigational item. This can include the type of VOR, the frequency, and the identifying code. Typically, distance, bearing, estimated time and route, and lat-long coordinates will be provided. As just mentioned, this sequence will work for other navigational items on the map with similar results. 
NDBs, fixes, visual reference points, and user-created waypoints. These types of navigational items can be complex, and therefore other lessons will address the choices and uses available for these items. The knowledge of how and the ability to use multiple features together in the Skyview HDX system allows pilots to find the information they need quickly and easily. A great example of how extremely well this works is when combining the nearest feature, covered fully in another video, followed by an info selection. Let's take a look at this. Let's say you're in flight and want to find a nearby airport, VOR, or other critical navigational aid. Start by pressing the nearest button located on the bottom menu bar. The display updates to show a list of airports with corresponding information, including airport identifiers, distance, bearing, and runway length. Note how the nearest selection will always default to the airport tab when selected. As noted earlier, other navigational tabs are available for selection depending upon your system setup and information database available. Using a touch action or scrolling with a knob, highlight an item. Then on the bottom menu bar, select Info. The display will now update showing the information page providing detailed data about the selected item. It is worth mentioning here that the option to select the info page will always exist no matter what the primary display page has been configured to be by the user. It is also important to point out that for safety reasons, at no time will the info page consume the entire screen, covering up the primary page information. If the EFIS page has been selected as the primary page, as what is typically done, the info page will never be displayed in place of or cover up that page. Thank you for watching this HDX Academy video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Dynon YouTube channel so that you will be alerted to new content when it appears.